this story is probably one that is old news to everybody, but I wanted to talk a little bit about it. I was looking for another story earlier, and I came upon this one, and I wanted to just share a little bit about this. John Doe, Grant County, Kentucky, um, was discovered April the 9th in 1989, a white male, approximately 25 years of age, 6 foot 5, around 230 pounds. Brown hair, eyes unknown. He was found nude, no clothing. Um, he had a previous healed nasal fracture. He had um, flat head syndrome, meaning the back of his head was flat. He had extensive dental work, including 10-unit porcelain um, fixed, meaning that he had teeth that were like a bridge that were, you know, implanted. Um, so you would think that maybe a dentist would be able to, you know, that that would have been a help. His case on NamUs is unidentified UP number 86. On Sunday, April the 9th, 1989, the victim's remains were discovered in a tobacco barn in rural Grant County, Kentucky. It is estimated the victim was killed approximately two weeks prior to being found. He was shot twice in the back of the head with a 22 caliber weapon. His hands were cut off and he was stripped of all of his clothing. The fact that he had a healed broken nose and extensive dental work and just the just the sketch that they made of him, the the likeness, the computerized likeness that they did of this man tells me that it's possible that he might have at one time been a boxer. That may be why how he lost his teeth, just from the fact that he seems to be very stocky. He was also a very big man, so he could have also have played sports, football, or wrestling maybe. But his hands having been cut off means that whoever did this didn't want him to be identified by fingerprints. So that means he may be in the system somewhere. The hair style that they've drawn on him is something that would remind you of someone in the military, maybe. So I'm going to read this right here. This is from Medium.com, The Mystery of the Man with No Hands. And, um, this person that wrote this is named Natasha Mullins. And... She says, organized crime comes to mind for this strange and brutal murder. Um, there are many reasons that unidentified people exist. Most often they are people who have fallen through the cracks of society and left without a support network. In a true crime community that craves unusual and gruesome cases, this Doe case does, doe cases don't always get as much attention as murders and disappearances. Uh, his name has been obscured by his killers for over three decades. Although all cases of unidentified people deserve our attention, there is something about a killer keeping someone from being returned to their loved ones that adds a sense of urgency. Um... On April the 9th, 1989, a gruesome discovery would be made in a tobacco barn off of Highway 22, just west of Dry Ridge in Grant County, Kentucky. This is the main road that runs through Dry Ridge and is easily accessible from other cities. Most of Grant County is sparsely populated farmland. Williamstown has a population of 4,000, this was the census in 2010. Although not many people live in Grant County, it is very rural and is next to a major interstate. A point of reference is that 
Dry Ridge is about 40 minutes from Cincinnati. The barn where this case would begin was a tobacco barn owned by a resident of Dry Ridge. The barn was visible from the road. The owner of the farm and property went to check on his particular uh, tobacco barn on April the 9th. Because it was a tobacco barn, he had tobacco there drying. He entered the structure. When he walked into his barn, he found some of the items in a pile on the floor. The exact, the exact items were unspecified, but they belonged to the farmer, and it was unusual for them to be stacked up in the floor the way that they were. He also began to smell an unusual smell. He went around to investigate, and as he's looking around the barn, he starts to pick the items up to put them back in the places where they were supposed to be. He was shocked to find underneath these items the body of a uh, the decomposing body of a man. The man was very large in stature. His hands had been severed at the wrists. He was completely naked. He had no clothes on him or near him. Um, early on in the case, it was misreported that the man was found hanging. However, this was not true. This story has continued up until present as somewhat of a local legend. But investigators have made it clear that that is not true. When, it was ta when his body was taken to the medical examiner's office, the results of the autopsy were expected given how the body was found. John Doe had been murdered. The style of the killing was surprising. He had been shot twice in the back of the head with a twenty two caliber gun. Execution style. The medical examiner also confirmed that his hands had been purposely cut off likely in an, ev in an effort to conceal fingerprint evidence. It is common for experienced killers to remove items such as teeth, clothing, jewelry, etc. that might identify the person. So the Grant County John Doe would also become known as the man with no hands. He was a Caucasian man who had been extremely tall, Six foot five and weighed around two hundred and thirty pounds. It is estimated to be between the age of twenty five and thirty nine, and when he died, he wore his hair cut in a brown crew cut that he had flat head syndrome, um, meaning the back of his head was flat. Whether this was incorrect or not is unknown. Multiple sources have described the man as having an unusually flat skull. Um, the FBI has him listed as having um, flathead syndrome. So, Another unique feature about this man was his teeth. He had extensive dental work, and investigators say that it had been done very professionally that he would have had a perfect smile. The dental work included porcelain, uh, artificial teeth attached to a metal bridge. He would have had to have lost his teeth in order to have these installed. So either his teeth had been pulled or they fell out or were knocked out like I suggested. Maybe he had been a boxer. Let's see. As for where the body was found, it was determined that he had been placed there after his death. So he was already dead when he was put in this barn. The medical examiner also estimated that he had been dead for around two weeks based on the rate of decomposition. The last time the farmer had checked the barn is unknown. With all the evidence, it, ended, it seemed inevitable that the man would be identified. After all, how could someone not be missing such a large man with such unique dental work? It seemed impossible that no one would report this man missing. Initially, with few details to go on, there was little that the police could do besides hope someone was looking for him uh, without being able to identify him by fingerprints. There was no missing people directly matching the man, and the case went cold. 
In 2017, investigators tried new methods of DNA sequencing in the hopes that they could compare the man's DNA to that of missing men across the country. When they tried to extract DNA, there was not enough to create a profile. This and the lack of fingerprints and dental records became the only way to rule out missing persons. So they used his dental work to rule out people because the other people that were missing maybe would not have had this kind of dental work. Um, unfortunately, for years the case remained cold. No one came forward to claim the man and no new leads were discovered. His killers as well remained at large. Without knowing, in February of 2020, after a resurgent of interest in this case, the DNA Doe Project decided to help solve the case. So at this point in the investigation, the issue is finding a link between the DNA relatives Grant County John Doe has matched with. In order to discover his name, researchers will have to go through family trees of family members that he has matched with. So his DNA was put into these genealogy databases and people donated money and he did match with some relatives out there in the world. The investigators looked into the owner of the property and neighboring properties and determined that they were not involved in the murder. But that does not mean that perpetrators didn't know of the area and weren't familiar with the area. One possibility is that they had scouted out the barn ahead of time and committed the murder and then moved the body to the barn. Despite these possibilities, it is extremely likely that the perpetrators simply came upon the barn as they were looking for a place to dispose of the body. It just goes on to talk more and more about the mafia and that type of thing. They don't think that this is a serial killer. Being that this man was so large, um, I don't know if this was a hit or if this was because he was so large and the person wanted to shoot him, waited until his back was turned and then shot him in the back of the head because they knew that he would be hard to take down in a fight, you know. But I don't think, and no one else really seems to think that this had anything to do with a serial killer. Um, just because this is really not most serial killers' means of, you know. Most serial killers target one particular um sex or race or body type and they like to carry out torture and rapes and different things like that and there's no evidence of anything like this so most larger men are not really in the category of a serial killer they want someone who they have dominance over so the identity has been it's hard to imagine that no one in the world was missing a six foot five inch man with perfect teeth and a once broken nose. Once this man's picture or likeness is, uh, you know, computerized or f the photo that they took from what they thought he looked like was put out there, that no one came forward. But keep in mind, if this had anything to do with organized crime or the mafia, people probably were just okay. I don't know who that guy is, and I don't, I don't, I don't recognize him, because they don't want to be the one to come forward with something like that. So it says that according to his DNA markers, it is believed that he was from Eastern Europe, or at least that is his, um, you know, genealogy. An easier explanation for why our doe has been identified is that he was not from the United States. 
when the DNA Doe Project sequenced his DNA, they believed that he had strong Baltic and Mediterranean ancestry. This has led some to believe that he may have been from Eastern Europe that he or his parents had immigrated to the United States. He may not have had any relatives in the United States. The larger markers of this man was North Atlantic, Baltic, Western Mediterranean, and Eastern Mediterranean. Uh, so, being that he had a large amount of foreign ancestry could explain why no one was really looking for him and that he really didn't have too many close marks or matches in the Jed match. If most of his family is still living, they are probably still living in the countries from where his genealogy came from. Throughout the years since his body was discovered, three missing men have been conclusively ruled out. Um, none of these men fit the physical description of the John Doe, and none of the dental ra records matched. Now, Jeffrey Dean Gerald is a man who was 25 years old from San Francisco who went missing in 1985. He was six foot three and weighed around 180 pounds. This is the closest that they have as far as height and weight of this uh, John Doe. He was believed to have been a victim of a serial killer, but has never been confirmed. Webb Sleuth submitted this as a potential match. Jeffrey is around the right height and weight. And from pictures of him, it appears as though he has had a lot of dental work. Jeffrey Gerald is still missing, and his case remains open. So, did they do any testing, you know? Did they have any way to get DNA from his family members to see if they potentially matched this man? It's one that is a possibility. Ernest Slavic. Now that is a name that maybe would go more along the lines of uh, European. Of all the people put forward as possibly being our John Doe, none look quite as plausible as Ernest Stanley Slavic. Although not everything matches up, the similarities are too many to discount. Missing from Quinwood, West Virginia, Slavic um, went missing in 1986. He was six foot one and weighed around 205 pounds. At the time, with some distinguishing features, he had shrapnel scars in his back and scars on his legs from gunshot wounds. Um, it appears that he also had a crooked nose and he wore his hair in a crew cut. The last name Slavic is also interesting because it has your Eastern European ties. Going with the previous theory that John Doe may have also been Eastern European, another thing is the scars on his legs. Although this was not mentioned, two of the missing people he was compared to also had scars on their legs and knees. There are two main problems with this potential that the ages would have been much different. The Slavic was much older. Um, but he did have a military background, and he was thought to be in very healthy condition. Um, like many does that are re receiving help from the Doe Network, the future for Grant County John Doe looks bright. It is now more of a question of when he will be identified. DNA will eventually give him a name. It will take time, but eventually they will find the right person who knows exactly who he is. Looking past the brutal nature of his crime, he was a human being who had family somewhere in the world. By telling his story, 
And the more people that are working on this, the better. Even though this cold case may appear to be thawing, we also must remember that there are so many other murdered people in the world who are, we are still trying to find their identity. So, hopefully, even if it is many years later, the people who killed him and so heartlessly dumped him in a barn in 1989 could finally be brought to justice. He may have brothers and sisters. He may have kids out there not knowing, you know. And could it also be that the fact that the police and everybody has written this down as him being six foot five, someone out there's dad, brother, uncle, cousin went missing and they were only six foot one and they're like, well, it couldn't possibly be him. He was six foot five. But maybe they got the height wrong when they measured the skeletal remains, you know. I don't know. Maybe one day we will know. A story from WKYT, which is a news station in Lexington, Kentucky. This was uh, published October the 4th of 2021. Investigators hope they're getting closer to cracking a Kentucky cold case after three decades the murder has gone unsolved. They are using a team of volunteer forensic genealogists. Um, on, and it just goes on to tell about how this man was found in this barn, shot in the head twice with a twenty two caliber weapon. His um, hands were sev severed. DNA Doe Project are working to, with a network of volunteers across the country who use genetic uh, genealogy to identify Jane and John Doe's. This person deserves to have their name returned to them and the family to have some resolution, says Francesca Worden of the DNA, who who works for the DNA Doe Project. This man that was missing from West Virginia is. If I thought, if I if I were these genealogists doing these tests, and I thought that the pot that there was even a slight possibility that this man from West Virginia, this Slavic, uh, which is a, a name that would be associated with uh, Eastern Europe, I would probably do some testing on people closer to the West Virginia area, Pennsylvania. There are a lot of people of that kind of uh, background and descent, uh, you know, of that um, in, in the Pennsylvania area. And so I would do my testing in that area. And, and look into his family members. Does he have any chi living children? Does he have any brothers or sisters or nieces or nephews, and I would look into that and just rule that out because it, it may not be him, but then that would take one, one more name off of the list of possibilities. And hopefully one day we will get a conclusion to this story. This man, whoever he was, whatever happened to him, a lot of people say this was a professional mafia hit, that this was a... Um, that his hands were removed so that they could not ID him through fingerprints. This was before DNA and, um, you know, <laughs> or maybe they just planned. It, it, there's a possibility that whoever did this planned to completely dismember this man. And maybe once they got started, they realized just how hard of a job this was going to be because this was a very big man. So they just abandoned that idea. But I'll conclude this video and just say um, hopefully one day we will know his identity. Hopefully one day we will know who put him there and killed him. And I would be very shocked if that information ever came out. But thanks for watching.